How far can the mortar sentries shoot? Once you learn the answer, it will change your approach to using them for the better. It certainly did for me. Greetings, Hell Divers. Today we're diving in deep to thoroughly understand how our mortar sentries work. We'll be uncovering its true potential by broadening our understanding of them, and then putting what we'll learn here into practical and tactical use. As usual, a disclaimer about imperfection and the expectation of some errors in my numbers. I'm going to be doing a lot of these videos, so I figured I'd just make an actual disclaimer that can be pasted instead of having to verbalize it every time. Now, let's get it on. As of this video, we currently only have two mortar sentries available to us. The AM-12 mortar sentry and the AM-23 EMS sentry. While both these sentries share many similarities, they also have a handful of very different variables to consider. For that reason, I've split them up into their own parts. Let's start with the Mortar Sentry, probably one of the top 5 stratagems that has a high chance of killing a fellow Hell Diver. We'll soon learn why this is the case. But first, the table. This table gives us more details and information about the specs and performance of the Mortar Sentry. The table is split between the basic performance of the Sentry on the left and the fully upgraded version on the right. Total ammo shows you how many shots the Mortar Sentry has within. Salvo count is the number of shots the mortar sentry fires in a salvo. Salvo interval is the time between each shot fired in a salvo. Salvo duration is how long it takes to get all the shots in a salvo out, while number of shots measures how many full salvos the sentry can get off and is essentially the number of targeting opportunities it has. Firing interval is the duration between each salvo measured from when the last shot of a salvo was fired until the beginning of the next. Target acquisition time shows you how long it takes for the sentry to lock on to a target. Max sustain fire tells us for how long the sentry is up if it continuously fires all its ammo from the moment it is summoned. Projectile flight time measures how long before a shell makes contact with the target area. This figure is a rough average and will change slightly depending on distance and elevation. Cooldown measures the cooldown duration between summons. And finally, mortar downtime shows you how long you need to wait for your mortar sentry to be available again, assuming it lives out its max sustain fire lifespan. Ooh. That was a lot to go through, but fortunately, the EMS Mota shares a bunch of the same characteristics as well, so I won't have to go through everything again. Now, for the breakdown analysis. To put numbers on how the Mota Sentry works in-game, after acquiring a target, the Mota Sentry will begin firing its shells high into the air above the target. This is how Mota do. It takes 3 seconds to get all 4 shots in the air, and the first shell will land in about 3.5 seconds after being launched, with the other 3 shells each coming in 1 second later. In other words, once the first shot of a salvo has been fired, you have 3.5 seconds to keep an enemy in the area or for yourself to vacate the area and stay a good distance away for at least another 3 seconds. At its best, when fully upgraded, the mortar sentry is capable of providing you with 13.5 salvos of indirect supporting fire which lasts for 105 seconds. Because of how the calculations to its firing is determined, you'll notice that the 50% sentry ammo upgrade results in a slightly higher 57% increase in its max sustain fire. Following this upgrade, with the one that reduces all sentry cooldowns by 10%, drops your cooldown from 180 seconds to 162 seconds. But the cumulative impact this upgrade has along with the ammo one is your mortar downtime dropping considerably. You only need to wait for 57 seconds or about 35% of the actual cooldown to get your mortar sentry back up. Also, you can only have one sentry of the same type summoned by you on the field at a time. So even if you get your cooldowns back before the sentry has reached the end of its lifespan, summoning a new one doesn't give you two. It just causes the old one to shut down, burning whatever ammo it had left. Next, let's talk about the EMS mortar sentry. Where it differs from the regular mortar sentry is that it doesn't fire in salvos, but rather in individual shots. This technically means it has more opportunities for engagement than the mortar sentry by a pretty large amount, almost twice more when fully upgraded. The new variables for the EMS sentry include fuse time, which is the delay between the mortar shell landing and detonating. The reason why this is here is, while the EMS field doesn't actually cause any damage, at least to yourself, you can still get killed by the shell as it lands. I have found this out firsthand. Much like the orbital EMS strike, getting caught in the EMS field depletes your stamina to zero and slows you down tremendously. Diving out of the field is the fastest way to leave it. Static field duration shows you how long the EMS field lasts for. When you take a look at the EMS sentry's firing interval of 6 seconds and its projectile flight time of 3.5 seconds, enemies who are the sole focus of your EMS sentry aren't getting out anytime soon. Speaking of firing interval, the EMS sentry has a slightly longer interval of 6 seconds compared to the mortar sentry's 5. This means if you want to sync up the firing times for both your mortar sentries, 
Always summon the EMS sentry first, since it takes longer to get ready to shoot. You'll want the EMS to land first anyway, so the regular mortar shells have an easier time landing on its target. You'll also notice that the EMS sentry has a really long max sustained fire duration of 133 seconds, which when buffed with the 10% cooldown reduction, drops its downtime to a mere 29 seconds. The implication for having such a low downtime means that if played well, you can make the most of your EMS sentry in key tactical engagements, and then basically have it back up when you need it again in another engagement. Its long-lasting presence on the battlefield can be felt easily, and after using it for a handful of games, especially against automatons, it becomes very noticeable when it's not in play. Now, for the key part. You might have noticed one very important variable missing from both tables. Engagement distance. If you watch my All Things Machine Gun Guide, we learned how far the Gatling Sentry and the Machine Gun Sentry could fire. Its measured engagement distance was quite a surprise and was further than expected. The Mortar Sentries, however, have surprised me even more. Both the Mortar and EMS Mortar Sentries have an engagement distance of 125 meters. Yes, 125 meters. I don't need to tell you that 125 meters is a really long distance. Instead, I'll show you just how far it is. Taking everything you've learned about both sentries earlier and then knowing it can do all that at a range of 125 meters makes you realize you've probably been using the mortar sentry pretty poorly, at least in terms of positioning. With the profile of the mortar sentries complete, this brings us to our next point, battle tactics and behavior. The mortars have a key feature of being able to engage enemies without needing line of sight. As long as they are within range, the mortar will begin bombarding them. However, there is one exception to this. As you saw from the clip earlier, the mortars are capable of bombarding fabricators, and it appears to be the only structure it does this to. But for the mortar to take aim at the fabricator, it needs a clear line of sight to do so. As you can see here, even though the mortars are well within range of a fabricator, because they do not have a direct line of sight, they aren't doing anything. Why would you want a mortar to target a fabricator? Well, there's not really a strong reason other than the fact that the mortar will eventually destroy it if allowed to bombard it long enough. The EMS mortar on the other hand can't destroy the fabricator, but the static field will linger around and cause any new bots that spawn to be stunned right at the entrance. It's an interesting observation, but not something that is especially useful outside of testing purposes. This does mean you can kind of choose what the mortar aims for by making sure that the fabricator you don't want to target is out of line of sight. Another behavior of the mortar is its targeting priority. Unlike how the machine gun and gatling sentry will change targets to ones that it can penetrate over heavily armored ones, the mortar sentries tend to fixate on a target and will keep trying to shell it until it goes down. It will target whatever happens to come within range first and will track it as best as it can. However, as you can tell from the profile, because it has such a long time between firing the shot and it landing, enemies that aren't stunned or slowed or walking can avoid getting shelled. This makes quick moving targets like hunters, stalkers and chargers a nightmare for mortar sentries to target. Less so for the EMS since its static field lingers and you can lure them back into it. Mortar sentries also either prioritize targets that are further away or are not able to pick targets that get too close to it. This makes them vulnerable to enemies that can close the gap quickly and brings us to our next point, mortar positioning. Because mortars don't need direct line of sight to engage enemy units, the best place you can summon it is behind cover small rocks and boulders, slopes and valleys, anything to keep the mortar out of direct line of sight will increase its odds of surviving and allow you to get the most out of its lifespan. Before you summon the mortar, make sure to mark out the maximum engagement distance so you know how far the mortar can support you from. That way, you know roughly the limit and range of your mortars and can fall back to it if you are getting pushed back and know not to stay idle in an area or if you are engaged in close quarters combat. Except for the EMS of course. Knowing the maximum distance of your mortars can also act as an enemy proximity trigger. If your mortar is still trying to shell something you can't see, that means there is an enemy at most 125 meters away, and it will probably be making its way over to the mortar to try and take it out. Use this opportunity to reposition yourself to face the enemy or to escape as it approaches the mortar. Alright, that about wraps up this video. Learning about the mortar sentries and figuring out how to test them was a, certainly an interesting experience. Initially, I thought the range of engagement was something like 70 meters, and then it grew to 90 meters, 
and then 100 meters, and then finally it reached 125 meters. Finding that out was a time consuming task and a surprise. This newfound knowledge has made me appreciate the EMS motor so much more, especially against automatons with my playstyle of long range support firing. Having just one well placed EMS motor on the field can make sieging enemy bases or drawn out skirmishes much more manageable at higher difficulties. I hope with this video, I'll see more EMS sentries being deployed in the field. If you've enjoyed watching this video and would love to see more content like this, consider dropping a like and subscribing. I really appreciate the support and love you guys gave to the All Things Machine Gun video and it's really motivating to see people enjoy the work and effort I put into them. What do you think of our mortars? If Arrowhead were to release more of them, what other mortars could we have? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you all for watching and I will see you in the next one. Over and out. Hell divers.